Okay, hi everybody. It's uh, Wednesday, the 1st of May, 2024. And yesterday we talked about an article by Muriel Newman called Mana or Mar Money. And it was about how um, iwi or Māori are uh, interrupting the business world in New Zealand for the worst. And we talked about Lake Taupo. We talked about the Waikato River. We talked about... Um, hydro schemes in the South Island with Naitahu and um, access to water and so on and tremendous corruption that is going on in the country uh, with these kinds of things and uh, let's pick it up today it says this but it's not just around lakes and rivers that iwi are muscling in muscling in means that they uh, come into a situation with no authority unlawfully and they start interfering with what is happening with legitimate business uh, enterprises. Uh, in the far north, the flow-on effect from the unlawful actions of local iwi are now threatening the muscle farm industry. Now, unlawful means that they're not lawful, but the police don't do anything about it. The government doesn't do anything about it. Local councils don't do anything about it. In other words, we have apartheid operating here. It's not one law for all. It's one law for Māori and one law for everybody else. And that that's just a great definition of apartheid. That's a great definition of racism, of separatism. That's a great definition of two parallel governments operating in New Zealand, a Māori government and the elected government. Well, let's find out more about this situation up north. Every year between August and November, the breeding season for green mussels, seaweed covered in mussel spat, is dislodged by rough seas and washed ashore. Now, mussel spat, this little term here, mussel spat is a baby mussels. They're sort of a pupae form. And they are harvested off the beach in 90 Mile Beach, and they're taken off to mussel farms elsewhere in the country where they're in a very controlled environment, and they can grow to adult uh, green lip mussels. And when they become adults fully grown, they're exported overseas. That's what it's about. So this mussel spat um, is washed ashore on 90 Mile Beach every year. And between August and November, they harvest them. Okay, so we got the idea. Once beach, the spat dies. So what you want to do is you've got to get it quickly before it dies. So commercial harvesters scoop up the seaweed from shallow water, load it into refrigerated trucks and transport it to mussel farms all around the country, which is what I've just explained. So they have to get to it pretty quickly so that it doesn't die. Otherwise, it's no good. The spat is then farmed for up to two more years before the fully grown mussels are exported to more than 70 countries. So this is a big business. This is going to 70 countries, New Zealand exporting green lip mussels. Such is the global demand for green lip mussels that this 350 million a year industry with 2,500 jobs, has the potential to become a $1 billion enterprise. So there's massive opportunity for growth here, for increasing the size of this business, and to reward those who've set it all up and made it go. Good on them. Mussel spat has been in harvested for 90 Mile Beach since, since the 70s. So this harvesting activity has been going on since uh, 19, the 1970s. So that's, that's roughly 50 years. The mechanical harvesters that have been used for decades are essentially raised tractors with scoops and wide tyres. The number of spats, spat harvesters is strictly controlled by the quota system. So that's our government's involvement in making sure everything's done properly. And the collection methods follow a long-established code set down by the Aquatics New Zealand. So everything's done according to code. Everything's done according to rules. And these rules are set by the government and aquaculture New Zealand. So that ticks two big boxes and that's all you should have. That's all you should need. That requires the mechanical harvesters to avoid shellfish beds, limit time on the beach and steer clear of high areas of high cultural uh, um, importance. But, it says, but in 2019, local iwi decided to disrupt the industry. This, here we go. This is another example. Without proof, they claim mechanical harvesting was damaged, damaging taro beds and leading to decline in numbers. So the key phrase here is without proof. They don't need any proof. That's what that's what has is the situation in New Zealand. If you're a Maori 
You don't need proof. If you're if you're European, you need proof. Well, again, that's apartheid. That's racism. If you have, if you don't have one law for all, you ha you have just apartheid and racism. You have South Africa. Well, let's read what happened. So we're going to click on this little hyperlink here and see what they say. And let's do that. And it leads us straight through to a New Zealand Herald article. And it says, 90 mile beach spat resolved as harvesters agree not to use heavy machinery. So here is the uh, people are harvesting the, the spat here on these trailers and, you know, cars. So let's see what it says. Tensions on Northland's iconic 90 mile beach over commercial mussel spat harvest have, have eased after harvesters agreed to to do the work by hand instead of taking heavy machinery into the southern end of the beach. So they're now having to do it by hand. That's pretty much like harvesting wheat by hand, which is what they used to do in the 17th and 18th centuries. But now we're having to do it with in modern New Zealand because of iwi interference. Discussions between Tirawa Hapu and the industry are continuing with Hapu pushing for a permanent agreement not to bring machinery um, south of that big Maori name. While commercial spat harvest harvesting is legal and has been happening since the 70s, the scale of the operation took local by surprise when a video was posted on social media last month. Now I don't believe that's true because um, it, really what's happened is that this has been going on for 50 years, no complaints, but suddenly Maori have found out that if you complain it can lead to huge big dividends and you can get ching ching money coming into your account. So complaining works. This is a modern phenomena and it's also uh, how Maori can take over the country little by little. The clip shows eight loaders working in the surf with scoop to, to scoop up seaweed then transferring it to truck and trailer units parked on the sand. So there's a picture of it, right? Of this uh, this this um, tractor. The video sparked an outcry about the potential effects on Tauru and Tuatua beds and raised questions about whether the industry was sufficiently monitored. Under certain conditions, the seaweed that washes up on that long Maori word, 90 mile beach, that's, a, that's the new Maori word that's never been uh, never been uh, um, asked for by the by the public is covered in spat and t the tiny larvae that grow into mussels. After harvesting, the spat is transported into refrigerated trucks on mussel farms around the country. We know all this. When the harvest when the harvesters returned this month, they were met by Ahipara blah 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 Tipania, who told them his hapu did not want to stop them collecting spat, but would not comp but would not compromise about the use of heavy machinery. Um, on the beach. He did not want them to stop collecting spat, but would would not compromise. So in other words, he says, he says, well you can you can harvest it um, by hand, but don't use don't use machinery. Well my first question is what right do you have to to do to do this? This has all been okayed by aquaculture New Zealand by the government. So what right does this Maori have to come along? Tipania, Patau Tipania, and interfere with a commercial operation that's been approved by the government and Aquaculture New Zealand? And the answer is they don't, but they do it and they're allowed to do it, seemingly. After some discussion, the spat collectors agreed to harvest by hand and leave their trucks and loaders parked up further up the beach. Some are already collecting by hand, which Pania, which Pania commended. But for us, it's about respecting our foreshore and seabed. Notice that? And keeping with sustainable practices that preserve our ta'onga and mana. Well, who says it's your foreshore? Nobody has. The foreshore and the seabed belong to all New Zealanders. They don't belong to Maori. So what are they saying that for? They already think they own New Zealand. We're not going to allow that machinery to come up and down the beach. Well, who says so? Well, Mary do. So, on what authority can they do that? Well, it's just because governments are too weak, pathetic, and the police to confront Maori about them taking over. This has always been our pataki kai, our food basket, and the practice was a huge impact across da 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 da. Well, hang on a minute. All New Zealanders have that where they go to fish and collect tarot and shellfish, not just yours. 
See, the thing about this is that Maori are talking about this like they own it, like they own the beach, and it's theirs. The agreement reached during the latest spat fall, in which spat collectors agreed not to use mechanical harvesting methods south of that big long Maori word, was amical and positive, said the chairman. We stand by our hapu in this decision to make a stand on this issue and will continue working with industry and iwi residents to establish acceptable industry standards and practice in our rowi. I, okay, look, th this is sort of like an alternative government talk. He's talking like he is the government. He's talking like he is the city council, the, the local council. He's talking as though he's got some authority, like he owns the beach, but he doesn't. Muscle spat harvesting is covered by the quota management system and a code of conduct in aquaculture New Zealand. Well, that, that should be enough. So how come we're having iwi involvement and how come everybody's taking it seriously? Who, who gave them this permission? Nobody did. But they, they've been given it by a weak appeasing government, a weak appeasing council and a weak appeasing police force who do nothing about this because it's a Maori. See? The code requires harvesters to avoid taharoa and tuatua beds, limit one time on the beach, Avoid areas of pub cultural importance and ensures all machinery is well serviced and not leading, uh, not leaking oil. Well, the code already has fantastic, that is, the government code and the Aquaculture New Zealand code all, already has um, some conditions in place where the tauroa and tuatua beds are protected. But oh no, it's not enough. So why are Māori um, involved in this? Because this is the thin end of the wedge. It's eventually going to ask, they're going to ask for a, a cut, a financial cut, a backhander to keep this going. This is what's going to happen. This is how they work. 90 Mile Beach provides 75% of the, of the spat of New Zealand's mussel farms. Now here's the most interesting bit of all. A new Te Honor, Honoroa Da, 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 governance board set up as part of the Tihika Treaty settlement process is currently developing a management plan for the beach which may include rule, rules for commercial activities. This is the most disturbing bit of all because what you have here is you have a parallel government emerging in New Zealand. You have the elected government and then you have a Maori government. So we're heading for a dual government system in New Zealand where Maori can control resources, control businesses, control natural environments, beaches, lakes, rivers, hydroelectric. Now, if you fast forward this to 2040 and the Hei Puapua, they have said they want complete control of the country by 2040. And if anybody can't see this happening right in front of our eyes, like this newspaper report, then they are completely stupid. Which is why we are doing what we're doing because if we end up like South Africa, if we end up like um, with full-blown apartheid, we already have it coming in fast and racism, then that's the end of New Zealand. Have a good day.